Okay, Wayne DeFrancesco here, and welcome to the website. We've got Seve Ballesteros, one of my favorite players. He was a fixture on the world scene when I was uh, just playing the turn pro in 80, and Seve was the, was the man. He won the British Open and uh, won five major championships between 1979 and 1988. Now this is really two tales. One of uh, the guy who won 50 European tournaments and he also won six PGA Tour events and the five majors, three British and two masters. And then at the age of 38 he won his last tournament in 1995 and never won another one. So the question becomes what made him so great and what happened when he lost his game. Now reading about it and listening to some interviews evidently it got so he really couldn't hit the ball in play enough and when his short game fell off a little bit he no longer was competitive so Let's take a look at his technique and see what we get here. Um, perfect, uh, perfect setup. You know, one of the great looking ready positions that you'll ever see. He looked like a. I mean, there's all sorts of cliches when it comes to Seve. You know, swashbuckling and whatever. But you know, he he was pretty much poised, looked, looked like he was poised to hit the ball. He's like a cat, ready to leap on his prey. But uh, as you'll see here, he likes to, he'll forward press, see his right third finger come right off the club. And as soon as it hits the club, he'll press not, his, not just his hands, but his whole body would press forward. So that's a pretty substantial move, and what that did is it it rocked his weight forward and then backwards. So you'll see his head keep moving back. So this gave him a great athletic stretch in the upper body. So you can see the early shoulder turn. If you look at Ricky Fowler's swing these days, you'll see a similar look in the upper trunk off the ball. Now he had exceptionally wide arms at the top. His legs, you can see it, they will begin to twist a bit. So as he reaches transition he's going to open up a open up a space here. Now thankfully the, the camera is nice and still on this particular shot so we get a nice view of his pivot movement. I think this is the 80 six masters so he's in his prime here um, so we don't have to worry about him being old and not swing the way he was when he was great so you'll see that the the forward drive will come from the right push into the left you see the substantial amount of forward thrust the head is pulled back into the box and then at impact you'll see it drop substantially backwards and downwards. Now if you've watched any of my videos you know that downwards is something that's common amongst great ball strikers. So as you watch him go back you'll see the lowering as he loads into the ground and then in transition, however, you'll see that he doesn't lower, he raises and then lowers late. So that gives him that extremely bowed look in the right side through the ball. But being a superb athlete, he turned that into a great looking finish. And of course, his, as is true with all really good players the 
you can't be a good player without great rhythm and tempo. So it's almost like you don't have to mention it, but some guys just have a, a more dynamic looking type of action and smoothness, and certainly Seve had that. Now, this view you're looking at here is kind of odd because the camera's way up on a tower somewhere, but it's the best. All the camera shots that I have of Seve from behind are moving around too much. Now, this is a nice fixed camera. And again, whenever the camera is fixed, we can draw lines and we can measure and look at what we measure. As long as we're not comparing it to a, another swing, this will work just fine. Now, you won't be able to, to see the plane of the backswing of the shaft. We'll look at another swing to look at that. But what we can see is the pivot movement. So we can see how the legs move because the camera is situated opposite the hands and we can see the head movement. So there's pretty standard, the lowering, and you'll see some nice depth in the right hip and leg. So the knee movement is fairly symmetrical here, meaning that the left pokes out and the right goes back. Now you will also see that halfway back the club is fairly vertical and we'll see that in some other swings at more ground level. And then slightly across the line at the top. Now another thing that's interesting is is noting the angle of the of the right arm and forearm. So we saw from the back view or the front view here that at the top he's fairly wide, meaning that the left arm is fairly extended and the right elbow is pointing not behind him but more in front of him. Now watch what happens here, and this is where I think, in my mind, that as, as he got a little older and was less able to put his hands on the ball and flip the face onto it, that, that this particular flaw in his pivot movement coming forward really spelled an early end to his swing as he put a lot of pressure on his short game as soon as the short game left him a little bit he wasn't really able to compete as well as he used to so as we watch now it's, it's interesting to note that any time you see a player who crosses the line there and since the plane really is over here what has to happen is the club has to move back this way. It can't stay out here, so you can't just drop your hands straight down and have the club stay out there because then it would approach from over here somewhere. So that would never work. So this club has to route itself back. And here's what normally happens, and this is what I'll tell people that I teach who cross the line. It said if you're gonna if you're gonna have to reroute the club, there's an opportunity, or at least there's a, a tendency to recruit the lower body to help with the rerouting. So in this case, that would mean something that would go this way and this way. And then if you keep, if you keep doing the circles, by the time you get up to the head, you got this. So let's watch and see what happens. As, so those are all just circulars. Now watch. There it is. So the, the right leg will push forward toward the ball. And the head will drop backwards. And then the hands will approach from well above the shaft plane. So there's the move. Now, everything is out far enough and he's got nice control with the grip so that the shaft is in between the arms. Now that's that's part of dealing with this type of action is keeping the club far enough out in front of you to not let it drop down behind too much. So now, through the ball however, when this thing comes in and the right forearm is pointed up here somewhere, 
if you note that left wrist is going to have to arch down the head the head pulls back and you saw here through impact how the head goes backwards and down so you know the hands are turning over pretty hard here so that's full release pretty much on on every shot now he won 50 European Tour tournaments so you know that in his prime on those courses over there he had to be able to control ball flight so you gotta know that he had incredible control with his hands now again watch the leg movement you see the right knee shoot toward the ball the head worked back and then watch the recovery once that happens and he's sort of under it watch the legs snap inward as he pushes the hips right back in the box so you don't normally see that you'll normally see that once it gets out here it'll finish outside the box to the right but not here and you'll also see the head as it dips will will thrust over toward the line again but again tremendous pressure on the hands to square the face there so let's take a look at a couple other swings so here's a here's a swing from down the line and this is pretty classic it's a it's not a long shot but you'll see the fairly low hands at address you'll see the inward movement of the hands the club comes up the plane and if anything stays outside the hands gets pretty vertical at left arm parallel so if you look here and then with that right arm in that elbow position like that the club crosses the line and then comes back and when that movement happens the right leg goes toward the ball the head drops back a bit but the club stays in between the arms and there's the left wrist bending down hands turning over great footwork and he whips it around to the left doesn't chase it covers it with his right side as best he can remember his head's busy kind of falling back but he manages to get on the ball with that right side so if we go to one of his older well, newer swings when he was older you can see it's the same the same idea now this is he's still playing in the masters but at this point he wasn't really able to shoot very good scores and he was hitting the ball all over the place it was kind of sad um, that's even before he that's you know before he got sick he kind of lost his game and again you'll see the same tendencies so you see his head up against that pine tree back there you'll notice how far it pulls back the steep approach and another thing that's evident here is how much his arms would appear to narrow up as he starts down and there's a good example of how the hands are forced to turn the face down pretty hard as he comes through so as far as the rhythm and the pivot movement in the backswing I have always thought this was really really exceptional if you watch watch the footwork and look at the movement into the right hip there that's just that's gorgeous and then when he came forward he just had a tendency to, to fix that club a little bit get it uncrossed come up underneath it and then turn it over real hard so anyway, one of my heroes, um, Sebi Ballesteros, great champion, but perhaps a technique problem that may have cut his career a little short.